Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Uncle Ron's Academy, the seventh episode. Today, we're going to be discussing how to identify minerals. So the first question that comes to mind is, what exactly is a mineral? So a mineral is defined as an inorganic element or compound in crystalline structure that is found naturally in the ground. The word inorganic means it does not come from living creatures. So coal or pearl is not classified as a mineral because they do come from living creatures. Okay, once you find a mineral, how do you identify what exactly it is? So there are a number of small experiments that you can do that will give you clues and then you can look it up in a guidebook and get the exact identification. First of all, you can't just identify a mineral by its color because some minerals come in multiple colors. For example, this is a mineral that is slightly purple, this is a mineral that is white, but they happen to be both the same mineral, the mineral quartz. So color is not a good indicator. What is a good indicator is something known as a streak. This is a porcelain tile, something you can probably find in your bathroom floor. And when you scratch a mineral on a porcelain tile, if it is softer than the porcelain, it will leave a powdered streak. Now you might think that the color of the streak is the color of the mineral, but that is not always the case. For example, this purple mineral, if you scratch it, doesn't leave any mark whatsoever. Here is a nice shiny grayish black mineral, but when you scratch it, it becomes reddish brown. So the powder doesn't necessarily follow the color of the mineral. This is known as the streak test. So number one, find out the color of the streak. Number two is known as the hardness test. The hardness test does not refer to whether or not you can break it. You can break almost all minerals with a hammer. It refers to whether or not you are able to make a scratch mark in the mineral. So for example, we have three major categories, soft, medium, and hard. If you can take a mineral and if you can scratch a mark in it with your fingernail, it is really soft. If I take this mineral and try to scratch it with my fingernail, it doesn't leave any mark whatsoever. However, if I take this mineral and I try to scratch it with my fingernail, it does leave a small mark. So this is a really soft mineral and the other was harder than soft. Is it medium or is it really hard? And again, we do that by scratching it with a glass plate. So I take the mineral and see if I can make a scratch mark on the glass plate. And in this case, I cannot. Next we try, can we scratch it with an iron nail? And if I take the iron nail and try to scratch it, yes indeed, it does leave a mark. So this would be known as a medium hardness mineral. There are some minerals, like this purple one I mentioned before, quartz. If I try to scratch it, it leaves absolutely no mark whatsoever. So the second category of clues that you get after the streak is the hardness test. Another test is to see whether or not a mineral is magnetic. So here I have a bunch of minerals. They're all sort of black except for this one, and here is a little magnet which I will put on the table, and I will see if any of these minerals will be attracted to the magnet. Mineral one does not stick. Mineral two, it's shiny, it's sparkly, and it looks like it might be magnetic. It doesn't stick either. Mineral number three, nice and black also doesn't stick. Mineral four, nice and heavy and dark and black. And this one actually does stick. So here we have a mineral that is magnetic, will pick up and be attracted to a magnet known as magnetite. Another type of description that will help you or another clue that can help you identify the minerals is the way it looks. 
This one is nice and sparkly and shiny. <clears throat> this one has a, what we call a metallic or a specular luster. Here is one that is nice and shiny. It looks sort of like a metal. We call this a metallic luster. Here is one that sort of looks like glass. That also is called a glassy luster. So the way a mineral shines to you is another clue as to the identification. One more clue that we can talk about is cleavage. Cleavage means different things depending upon how you use it and in what context you use it. But in referring to minerals, cleavage is whether or not the mineral breaks in certain shapes. You can see in this mineral, it is a perfectly good parallelogram. And if I smash it into pieces, I will smash it and it will break into many, many smaller parallelograms. So this has cleavage in respect to its shape of being a parallelogram. This one, similar, but is more of a rectangular shape rather than a parallelogram, although a rectangle is a kind of parallelogram. So here is another one that has cleavage, whereas something like this doesn't have any cleavage at all. It's just completely uh, no particular shape whatsoever. And finally, the thing that you can uh, do that can determine a really good clue about its identity is known as its density. So density is actually a comparison between an object's weight, its mass, and its volume, its size. So if I would like to find the density of this mineral, which looks sort of goldish to me, maybe it's a nice chunk of gold worth a lot of money. I know the density of gold is 19 grams per cubic centimeter. So first of all, we have to weigh it. To weigh it, we use a triple beam balance scale. We put the mineral on the pad and we move the beams until it balances. So this one is 30, not quite balanced, 31, 32, 33. And let's see if we can get this balance. And there it is approximately almost 40 grams, 39.9 grams is the weight. Let's round it off to 40 to make the calculations easier. Now we know its mass. How do we know its volume, its size? Well, if it was something like a box, we could easily tell its volume by multiplying its length, width, and height. However, it doesn't look like a box. There's no way of measuring length, width, and height in a mineral of this shape. So we use a technique known as water displacement. We put water in a container, in this case it's a uh, beaker, and the water level here says approximately 450 milliliters, and we put the mineral in, and the volume of the mineral will displace a certain amount of water. We read it again, this time it says approximately 500 milliliters, so approximately it went up 50 milliliters, and if you divide the volume uh, 50 into the weight, which is 40, you get a density which is less than one, not even close to the density of real gold. 1.25, okay, and we're getting a calculation here, 1.25 and we're getting a density quite different than the density of gold. So this indeed is not gold, it is what we call pyrite or fool's gold. So taking all these clues together, the streak test, the luster, cleavage, the hardness test, and the density test, well, along with the magnet test, gives you a lot of clues that you can use to look up the identity of the mineral in a guidebook and find out whether or not it is worth a lot of money, is it real gold, or just this gold. This is Uncle Ron's Academy, signing off. Bye, till next time.